Hello again. This is what is going on on the sun today, Wednesday 13th of April 2011. Well, the sun seems to be getting a fairly bad case of measles. We've had two new numbered regions overnight, 1191 and 1192. As far as I can see, there are four other new regions that are becoming visible. Two emerging regions and two rotating over the limb. The one following 1191 over the east limb seems to be a particularly large group, so it's probably quite promising for increased activity. Well, yesterday I forecast sea flares. Since the five I talked about yesterday, we've had another six. In fact, I've had to revise this video a couple of times already this morning because while I've been making it, we've been getting more sea flares. So let's see where all this activity is coming from. So let's first turn to the Stereo A spacecraft, which is orbiting ahead of the Earth, so sees the regions that have recently rotated off the disk. In the movie, we see there is actually some activity in the region just to the west of Sun Center. That probably is the remnants of region 1184. It'll be at least a fortnight before that region returns to the visible side of the Sun, so will not concern us for a while. Next, we turn to the Solar Dynamics Observatory to see what's happening on the side of the Sun that's facing the Earth. In the upcoming Sunspot and Magnetic movies, the most interesting thing to look at is the emergence of these new regions. The best way of finding out where to look is to use this UV continuum image from the AIA instrument. The bright areas here are plage. The plage of old regions is diffuse, whereas the plage of new regions is bright and compact. Look at these two spots in the movie and see the birth of two new regions. You may have to run the movie several times to see all the details. An additional interesting point in the magnetic movie is to note how much bigger the magnetic regions are than the sunspots, which goes to show how misleading it can be just to look at sunspots. In the Helium 2 movie, the story remains this large filament in the southern hemisphere, which now snakes all the way across the disk. You can see it as a prominence both on the southeast and the southwest limbs, and in between is a filament. Perhaps you can see it more clearly in this H alpha image from uh, the Soon network. I still believe that the part that I've marked here will eventually erupt quite spectacularly. It just hasn't done so yet. Parts of it actually have disappeared from time to time and then reformed. That is a phenomenon christened by the French as a disparation brusque, and I'm sure I'm going to be hearing from my French friends how badly I pronounced that. There's also some interesting activity in the northwest. In the Corona movie, I think the most interesting area to concentrate on are these two new regions coming over the East Limb, where most of the flares seem to have originated, though a few have originated from the 1190 complex. Lastly, we turn to Stereo B to see what regions will be rotating over the limb in the next week. We can clearly see the activity in region 1191 to the west of Sun Center. There's also some activity in the southeast of the image, which I'm pretty sure is the old region 1176. From the full sun coronal image, we can see there are no new regions due back for several days, and that will be featuring the return of region 1176. Have there been any CMEs in the last 24 hours? Well, let's take a look at the SOHO coronagraph data and see. What we can see here is the remnants of the CME that we discussed yesterday moving out into the wider field of view C3 instrument. Since then, there doesn't seem to be any more coronal mass ejections. The auroral arc seems quite active due to the high speed solar wind stream that we seem to be in at the moment. And the KP index has varied between 2, which is quiet, to 4, which is unsettled. We've even had a couple of instances where we've been at level 5, which is considered a minor geomagnetic storm. So, in summary, then, as predicted, the sunspot number has increased markedly to 114, as has the X-ray background to B6. The F10.7 centimeter flux is up to 110 solar flux units. According to NOAA, the solar wind speed has gusted up to 650 kilometers per second in the last 24 hours, though it's nearer at the moment to 550. And as you just heard, the KP index has been highly variable at levels between 2 and 5. I see no reason to change my forecast from yesterday with a very good chance of getting C flares, an outside possibility of getting M flares, and still I see nothing on the sun that persuades me that an X flare is imminent. Although we've had a quiet time for CMEs in the last 24 hours, I still think there's a good chance that they will occur, but the chance of a major geomagnetic storm is quite low. That's it for today. Don't forget, links to my other videos are listed in the description box below. Keep safe. Bye for now.